What is up everybody, it's Nicky from Vector and in this video we're going to try to create GUI animation using SVG filters. I think that was perfect. Yeah, that was... Oh yeah, that's perfect. It was my fourth try creating this tutorial, guys. Um, I think the first ever intro I got it correct. So, uh, in this video we're going to take a look on how you can create uh, this uh, GUI animation. If you don't know what's GUI animation, uh, here are some examples. You can create those animations using this effect and yeah I'm gonna teach you how we can do this right very cool right yeah now before we start there are two ways to create this one is using CSS and other using SVG filters now I'm not gonna go focus on CSS because I, I find it quite slow uh, rather than SVG filters yeah SVG is quite perfect and very 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 crispy results you guys can get it from SVG rather than CSS so let's get started should we just watch it out this tutorial if you find it quite useful guys please 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 subscribe to my channel this is how we support the, uh, this awesome content coming out if you find it guys useful drop us a like too now this channel is supported by subscribers like you just that's just subscribe that's all you guys have to do to support this awesome content tutorial coming out now as you can see what i have here i just have a two three divs here uh, two div inside it of a div called container one and two and what I'm just simply doing here is animating this div uh, And that's all what I'm doing here now. I Consider you guys know the CSS and basic CSS and what are CSS animations that I'm doing here But if you don't know guys don't have to worry you guys can check the codes uh, The links will be in the description to this pen you guys can check the codes out there so let's start right so to define the SVG filter we first need an SVG tag so I'm gonna st uh, st start and end an SVG tag oh my bad it's quite difficult to uh, see the keyboard once the microphone is between you and your computer so inside the inside the SVG tag there's a call as devs tag you, don't, you guys don't have to worry much just uh, uh, just write this devs and end the devs and here goes the main part here comes the filter tag when which our filter is gonna exist Now this filter tag can contain a single filter or a multiple filter depending on what you are What you want to achieve with the filter? It's up to you guys now to target this filter or if I want to apply to some element I need it to target it with an ID or so I'm naming that ID as Koo did that now inside the filter here comes the main part now there are total three filters we're gonna go to apply here to achieve this effect so let's uh, start with the first filter now the first filter we're gonna go here is the Gaussian Burr filter now if you don't know Gaussian Burr filter uh, and if you guys ever use Photoshop you might heard about it what is Gaussian Burr it's kind of thing that simply as the name suggests blur out your graphic or your image uh, what whatever you want to apply that on so inside that I'm gonna have to apply a Gaussian blur filter. This is how you use this is how you apply in SVG filter. Just make sure it's spelled correctly. So it's F E, make sure it's small small, G capital A U S S I A N and B L U R. Make sure it's a camel casing thing, so G and B is capital, so you write it as it is or it won't work. So here's the F E Gaussian blur. Now F E Gaussian blur takes two value. One is the input and other is the amount of blur which is denoted by standard deviation here oops my bad now let's talk about input here first now what we have to provide it in the input the question here arises right so we want the input to be this two elements this to dev to be the input and to do that there's a keyword called source graphic In in uh, SVG filter, there's a keyword called source graphic, which will, if once you apply it on uh, some element like container, so whatever inside the container, whatever the particular view or whatever the desired output on the screen is, will be your input for the filter. Now, 
the standard deviation is uh, the amount of blur what you want to do so like uh, you can apply in two ways there you go 10 and two some sort of like two two numbers or two integer values uh, to make uh, it in uh, blur so 10 pixels in the x and two pixels in the y but i'm not going to do i'm just wanted to make it 10 pixels blur in both x and y direction i don't want to go for different different values in different directions so we applied the first filter here but as we can see nothing is happening here so I, let's start and apply this filter to our element now to, we will apply this filter to the container so this filter get affect affect this both the element as this two div is nested inside the container applying this to will give this source graphic as this two elements so to apply using CSS in, inside the go and target the container you just write filter tag filter colon hit URL and inside the URL just if it's an ID write hash and name of your filter go now if with that as you can see it blurred it out see that this is working and now you can observe this here uh, let's observe this this check this portion out here see it's already morphing and it's already started to go but the problem here is we don't want this translucent or the semi opacity or semi solid edges we want it to be hard edge as uh, like it's hard edge oh my god what's a hard edge so we want it to be a hard edge and uh, to do that uh, there is a filter called oops I'm my bad there's a filter called color matrix f e c o l o r m a t r i x now if you ever use coral draw or some sort of illustrator vector program you might have heard about it what is color matrix and if you never heard about it uh, it took me a while to understand what is color matrix and how it works but uh, once you get your head around it's easy so what color matrix is actually it's a photo manipulation trick or the color of your photo color of your graphics or color of your image anything you can manipulate with this filter now how you how this filter does that is quite uh, complex not much complex a bit complex to understand but still uh, for the first let's check out the inputs what it's going to take and then I'll let you know how it works so first of all it's going to take an input here and the second property it's going to take is the mode I'll, I'll, I'll let's let you know the series as what's and third property you're going to take is the values now I'm going to end oops my bad so here is the color matrix now what will be our input so we want the input not to be the source graphic uh, we don't want the input to be this thing here we don't want we don't we want the input to be this blurred this blurred thing as it's semi translucent edges to be the input of our color matrix so we can apply and harden the edges we want uh, so to do that there is a property called result to go inside the Gaussian blur and just type result is equals to some sort of name you want and just write name here I'm bad with naming guys so just bear with me so I just wrote name here and inside the name what it's actually doing is is taking this effig uh, this graphic and storing whatever applying the filter and storing that result into the uh, some sort of variable you can say that consider as a variable and storing that graphic into the name so once if I wanted to apply another, f another filter on that I'll just input as input this uh, this blurred thing into a color matrix in the, and then I can apply a color matrix filter on this element uh, this filter so now what the, is the mode here now the mode is now there are a lot of modes pro I'll just probably link the uh, what the different types of mode down below there but uh, just consider I'm going to use a matrix mode here so I'm going to input as a value matrix here now once we did the with the matrix here now we have to provide a matrix value but what to provide and it's been quite, quite a tricky once but I'll let you know how it works so here is a oops, my bad. Here is a matrix here. So I'll put it as R, G, B, and A. Here's what this matrix looks like of color matrix and the offset. It's a matrix of four rows and five columns here. Now 
here this is the new color that's gonna get calculated and here is our old color it's just mine with uh, the drawing and just drawing with the mouse I don't have tablet right now now how it's gonna calculate is let's suppose I provided an input here a B C D and E and what this A B C D belongs to this A B C D it's all characters belongs to values between 0 and 1 except alpha just leave the alpha right now so what we what the how this new R channel or this channel is going to get calculated the new color is R channel will be calculated as the current R color plus oh my bad multiplied by the value of A plus the current green color multiplied by the value of B and so on so blue is multiplied by C okay and the alpha is gonna get multiplied by D and the oops plus the simple offset here oops not the O just the offset now this is ne our new R channel now this R channel the same goes for the green channel and the blue channel and the alpha so after that it this thing RGBA it will form in a color format of RGBA color format and will give us a new color new color so this gives us a new color and that's gonna be our color for graphic but in our case as you guys can see here in our case we don't want to mess with the color here we are fine with the black we just want to mess with this opacity thing and what opacity is actually is that opacity deals with the alpha channel and how you can deal with the alpha channel here is just manipulating by this value here as you can see this alpha and this alpha by manipulating this and the offset we gonna we will by keeping it uh, we are not gonna go affect all these things. It's gonna be a shit. So we're gonna get uh, we just gonna get uh, Mess with these two values here. So the alpha value. So this uh, Translucent or semi-transparent edge forms a solid edge So let's start right should we now how we can provide this value for matrix So for to do that what we'll do we'll first provide the value of the first row the second row the third row and the fourth row so that it can read the values now to provide that I'm not going to move mess with the R channel B channel R red green and blue channels so I'm going to keep the red channel as it is I'm going to make blue channel as it is I'm going to make green channel as it is I'm just as you can see that's just providing the identity matrix here for the RGB but I want to mess with the alpha here here comes the fourth alpha now I, n I know a bit of a value that works fine here 18 uh, I think below 15 it won't work uh, it might give you some sort of cranky edges uh, but no I uh, I prefer 18 I cal uh, 18 works fine for me from trial and met trial and error method and minus 8 as offset that works fine for me so as you guys can see right now it is working this is morphing mm and let's check this out see it works right and see as you can see this is working you can you guys can leave it here or there's one more method to do I'm not sorry method there's one more thing to do here is so to met the, the, what's the third filter for as you guys will say um, we already achieved the effect what's with the third filter right now what the third filter is mainly is for is like it will take the source graphic or the original what we had and it's gonna paste in top of that in top of these two objects uh, with the same color and same you won't be able to see that but if, if there is some text inside it and you you guys want that text should not be affected by this filter uh, now as a backup option we do that so that so the thing the text or anything inside that image or some sort of uh, display element should not get affected by our filter and to do that we will need is a blend filter so to do that just write fe blend is the blend filter and what blend filter uh, properties are just gonna take two input one is the input and other is the input two and what it's gonna do with that is it's gonna take the input one oops my bad so what it's gonna do that it's gonna take the input one here and it's going to paste on top of input 2 
Now what you want to paste on top is our source graphic actually are these the boxes the unmodified objects and I want that to place on top. So I took the source graphic here the keyword that's going to give the source graphic and I'm going to input this this color matrix thing into here on the top. So you can see it's pasting already in the top but we don't give provide the input 2. The input 2 will be this thing. So I'm going to store it into a result as variable. So I'll just name it as B and I'll just put it B. See? It works. Uh, so this object gained the full shape rather than curved and also it it retains its original form while morphing. So the, what this blend filter does is right. So what you can do is you can either go with the value uh, cranking up up to 16 and you can see it's not get much affected. We have the original two shapes morphing into each other rather than change. Uh, as you can see, if I didn't apply this, the one thing will happen here is it will deform. You can see the, the rounded, rounded edges for the rectangle. There is no problem with the circle because it's already rounded edged. But with with the if you blend option, what it happens here is it's gonna retain its shape. It's not gonna change. So as you guys can see, it's working here. So that's all with this filter you guys can mess with around and let me know what you created with this. But before I go, I just want to quickly show you some examples here. What I have here is a um, simple example to show you how you can create a GUI animation or sorry, GUI navigation here. So in this case, I have on the hover effect, I have four options coming out of one option or the main menu. But you guys can do that on the click rather than on the hover. I just want to show you the example. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to paste the filter that we originally created here, ID with Go. I'm going to apply that to the main container or to provide the source graphic. I'm just going to write it using filter, colon, URL, hashtag, Go. Did that and save it. Now, if I hover on this thing, let's 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 see. This, this is quite cool. Okay. So if I hover on here, see. GUI navigation or GUI some sort of social navigation or whatever you want to create with this and uh, on sticky page and navigation anything you want you guys can create with up yours but I have some few more examples that I created on code pen here is one of the example that I created is a fidget spinner using the same trick technique that you guys can see here I just did is it just spins the same thing so you can see uh, here, this you can see this GUI thing. It's created by three circles morphing in this thing. This has, has a blob and just morphed all this thing get morphed with each other. So you can guys can create it out. You can just check this pen out if you get inspired from this. Or there's one last thing I want to show you guys. This is the masterpiece. Now I created this uh, like uh, three days ago. You guys can check that on code pen pig pens. It's still there. And if you haven't seen this. Uh, I tweeted it uh, recently and here is the same technique that I used this is the left right and center animate left right and center letter part I break the letter into three parts and try to morph it but you can see here there is an extra animation which with the ghost stick 3 div now there, it's not the same thing here I applied some of the different filters here this here's the second filter you guys can check it out it's pretty much same uh, what I did just simply apply the turbulence and the displacement filter extra to mess with so I can get a ripple sort of effect a sticky material sort of effect so you can see that this is the same here I'm not gonna see in this I'm not blending it because I don't want the original shape or I don't want it to retain its original shape right so that's all guys that's it so if you guys like this video definitely give us a thumbs up to make support the channel this channel is supported by viewers like you those who say subscribe and like the content to keep us motivated and make the content flowing this sort of awesome tutorials for you guys so keep us supporting right just just sub hit the subscribe button if you aren't subscribed yet and let us know what should we do next right so guys thanks for watching and peace